Hello, hello friends. Today we are going to be talking all about how to set great New Year's resolutions. So hang in with me while I introduce our very special guest. But first, welcome back to the Keto Fit Weight Loss Coaching for Women. I am your self-care keto coach, Jess. I help women lose weight with a keto diet and a self-care mindset. I'm going to be bringing in our guest right now as she just jumped on Instagram. But today we're going to be talking all about how to set great New Year's resolutions. And actually 77% of people actually give up on their New Year's resolutions after the first week. Welcome, Carly. Thanks for being here with us. Hi, thanks so much for having me. It's so fun to be here. Absolutely. I was just introducing you and sharing the statistic that you have up on your website about 77% of people giving up on their New Year's resolutions within the first week, but you say that there's nothing wrong with them. It's just the way that they have been taught to think about themselves and their goals. So I'm really, really excited to dig into this with you today. Um, but first, I was just introducing my audience. You are a New Year's resolution coach. You are a certified life and weight loss coach. Would you tell us your story about how you got into coaching and why this particular niche? What got you passionate about this? Yeah, absolutely. I think that my story makes much more sense from the perspective of where I'm at now. I think mm -hmm. kind of at a lot of steps along the way, I was kind of not really sure where everything was heading, where it was all going to lead to. But I always say that my story started when I read The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin several years ago. Such a good book. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's one of my favorites. Um, and it really got me into the personal development space and opened my eyes to those little tweaks and changes that we can make to move closer to the things that ultimately we want. Mm -hmm. um, and so that sent me down a path of reading a lot more, starting a blog. Um, along the way, I started a professional home organizing company, and I loved that getting to help people transform their lives by changing their external environment and right. cleaning out their closet or organizing their pantry. It was so much fun. But I realized that even though we were doing the things that I thought would allow people to have the time and space to make progress on those things that really mattered to them, they still had something in the way. They weren't taking those steps to go skiing on the weekends or to get down on the floor and play with their kids, even though those are the things that they really said that they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and so somewhere along the way, I started listening to more and more podcasts and reading more and more books. And I found the life coach school and started coaching the clients that I was helping organize. And I realized mm, this is the key. This is the tool that people can use to break down those barriers that they have. Um, and so I went on to get certified by the life coach school as a certified life and weight loss coach. And it has been such a fun journey. And now I primarily use those tools just with coaching clients, but I have them in my back pocket too for any organizing clients who need that help yeah. as well. But it's been so fun to get here. And now looking back as a New Year's resolution coach, it's so fun to see how my journey started with reading The Happiness Project and how Gretchen Rubin changed her life over the course of the year, um, kind of through her resolutions that she set up during that book. And now that's exactly what I do, how, what I help my clients with. Um, and how I came to resolutions, I've always loved resolutions. I haven't always kept them though. So that's something that I will admit to, not yeah. something I've ever been perfect about. So I can relate and I can empathize with the people who it, it just seems impossible. Um, but along the way, as I started to keep them, I started to realize what a transformational container it is to say, mm -hmm. to be able to take a step back and look at the year ahead of you. And a year is the perfect amount of time, I think, because you can accomplish so many big things in a year, you can make big progress on big things, but you can also accomplish a lot of little things along the way. And yeah. it's not your five or 10 year plan that can kind of seem a little abstract and out there. It's something that most of the time we can strategically and tangibly kind of get our arms around and really understand where we want to be at this point next year. And I also liked the idea of not getting so niche down to just helping people start a business or just helping people write a book. I liked that all of those things could be encompassed within helping someone with their resolutions. And really, the, we need the exact same tools and strategies to keep any resolution, whether it's weight loss or writing a book or getting to the point where you can run a marathon, they all require the exact same tools. Mm -hmm. And so being able to share those tools within the context of whatever resolution someone is setting then gives them the knowledge that they need to reach any other goal in any other year. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing all that. And I can tell that you are multi-passionate. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I, I am too. And I'm sure a lot of your clients are multi-passionate and have a lot of like variety of goals that they want to knock out within the course of a year. But first, I wanted to ask you, because it's so interesting that you um, were working with like home organization, right? And so you're going into people's homes, you're actually doing the work with them to change their outside atmosphere. 
And a lot of times people think like, oh, well, my home is my obstacle to being the person mm -hmm. that I really want to be. All of this clutter is just getting in my way of doing the things that I really want to do, like spending more time with my kids. If I didn't have to clean up all this crap all the time, and if my home was a little bit more organized, then I totally would spend more time playing on the floor with my kids. But you're saying that then these people still weren't doing it. Um, so it's interesting because, you know, you're getting in there and you're helping people create different outward results. Um, but it wasn't really changing them, right? It wasn't really, and coaching is what actually changed them. So can you tell us more like, how does coaching work? How would you define what coaching does and what kind of tools are you using with people to coach them? Right. Well, I will say that dealing with the external stuff, going through your closet and your pantry, all of that does matter and it does help. It kind totally. of gives you the space then in your brain and in your home to do that next level of work of coaching. So for a lot mm -hmm. of people, like that's where they have to start and that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. As far as what coaching is, the way I define it is helping people to ask the questions that they don't need, they don't know that they need to ask. It's mm -hmm. helping them to figure out what's going on in their brain, what's going on with the emotions that they're feeling, what's standing in the way of moving towards the things that they really want. And then on a more practical, tangible level, what are the concrete steps that they need to take in order to get there? So I like to kind of balance the two sides of the tangible strategies of starting to keep a food journal. Like I know that's something that you help people with um, or a habit tracker or, okay, what is on your to-do list for this week? Like what are the things that you actually need to check off to get you closer to your goal? But also the mm -hmm. mindset stuff of yeah. why do you think you're having trouble getting there? What mm -hmm. is standing in your way? What's, what have you achieved in the past and what helped you get there? What could you pull from that to help you get there now? So there are, I think, a perfect blend of things that can help you reach any goal, whether it's wanting to lose weight or start a new diet or just keep your New Year's resolutions. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you and I are both so aligned within this. Like, we have to balance the concrete strategies along with the mindset work because so many coaches will focus on just the concrete strategies, you know, right. like you'll have your personal trainer at the gym and maybe, you know, hopefully sometimes they're digging into some of the mindset stuff, but really they're just holding you accountable. They're telling you exactly what to do every week or a nutritionist is like, here's your meal plan, eat this exactly. And people will be successful on that for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. But once they no longer have the coach with them or once they lose their motivation or whatever it might be, they don't actually have the tools to be a different person. They just kind of go right back. People gain the weight back because they never did the inner transformation or the house gets cluttered again because people never took a look at their priorities and what's really important to them and how they wanna feel and why they're even doing any of this in the first place. So I love, love, love that you are getting down to the root of things with people, which is really their beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing that really drives everything else. Um, one of the things that I know that we say a lot in my coach community is that your thoughts create your feelings. And so a lot of people think it's the other way around that your feelings kind of drive everything and they do drive your actions, but it's when we can really break things down to that thought level of what are the things that you believe about yourself and your goals and your past and everything that's got you here and whether you can even reach that goal that you're working towards. It's that belief level that is really where a lot of that mindset transformation is going to take place. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you're multi-passionate. I'm multi-passionate. I'm sure your clients are so multi-passionate. They're coming to you and they're probably like, I want to do this, 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 this. Um, so if you have a client that has multiple goals that they want to work on, they do want to write a book and they want to lose some weight and they want to spend more time with their family and they want to take up skiing, right? So they have all these things that they want to do. And of course, a year is a long time. So do you have, do you recommend that people just focus on one goal at a time and go all in? Or is it more like do a little bit each month towards all of the goals? What do you think? I let people choose because I'm someone, like you said, I'm multi-passionate. So this year I had my 21 for 2021 list of the 21 things that I wanted to achieve. And so to me, that was like a good blend of big things and little things. And I launched a podcast, but I also just like got some new plants for my house and they were both things I wanted to achieve. So they were, they were both on my list. Yeah. Um, and I like having multiple things because when I feel like I'm not making a lot of progress, even if I am, like I didn't launch my podcast this year until September. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't wait until September to finally have a big win when it comes to keeping my resolutions. Right. Yeah, I was able to check off a lot of little things along the way and build momentum that way. Mm -hmm. um, but some people, like if they really do have one big goal, like they want to write a book or they want to write a marathon. And right now the only kind of marathon they're doing is like that new show on Netflix. Like if they're that far from reaching their goal and it just feels completely impossible, then that's a time when I'll work with a client and say, well, maybe we just want to focus on this one big thing. Because when you have that singular focus, you are able to really speed up your progress. 
Um, but some people don't. Some people have a bunch of things they want to focus on, and I think that's okay too. I don't think there's one right way. If there's a lot of things you want to focus on, those other things are probably still going to be in the back of your mind pulling your focus anyway, If even mm -hmm. if you just say there's one big thing. But if there is one big thing, then go all in on that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just say you, you have a client come to you and they're like, I want to lose 50 pounds this year. That's my one thing. I don't give a crap about anything else. I just want this one thing. Do you try to pull out like other goals and resolutions that people have so that they can, you know, have that quick win of get the new house plants or whatever it might be like a one day goal that they can knock out? Or do you just kind of take their word for it and just go with what they said? I'll go with the 50 pounds and then we'll mm -hmm. create and kind of manufacture the smaller wins along the way of like, you didn't overeat this week. That is amazing. Or you got that new book that you're going to read to figure out this new diet plan or something else you want to tweak. Um, so we'll just kind of manufacture the smaller wins within that, which of course you can do with anything. Um, and then a lot of times the other things will come up along the way. Like I realize that I don't have that great a relationship with my sister. She's always critiquing me on my weight and that plays into this. And then we'll kind of work on that relationship. So mm -hmm. as I'm sure, you know, when you work on kind of one big goal, all the other things come up along with it anyway. So we end up doing coaching on a lot of different topics. Yeah, absolutely. So most people drop off of their New Year's resolutions within the first week, 77% of people. That is a crazy amount. So, but you said it's not that there's anything wrong with you. It's the way that you've been taught to think about yourself and your goals. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that? What do you mean by that? And how do you help your clients shift the way that they're thinking about themselves and their goals so that they can be successful? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first thing is just resolutions and the fact that they get a bad rap and the fact that most people drop off. There's some statistics that say as early as January 8th, some stretch it out a little bit longer. It's one of those things we'll probably never really know. But the fact is most people on December 31st aren't celebrating all of the resolutions that they've kept. So I think that's one of yeah. the things that when people think about setting resolutions, they're kind of at a disadvantage because they don't have the expectation that that's something I'm going to keep or follow through with. So that starting out is kind of putting people behind. There isn't a cultural ass assumption that it's going to be something you're going to actually do. Mm -hmm. And then I think as far as what, uh, thinking about ourselves, it's exactly what we were talking about, the mindset things. Um, we're kind of surrounded with that expectation, even outside of resolutions, that things take a long time to achieve and that hustle mentality and maybe you're not enough, maybe you're not worth it. Maybe you're selfish for thinking about yourself and working on yourself and the things that you want. So there's a lot of those underlying messages, sometimes there's subliminal cultural things that we have to really work through for everyone to get to the point where we can really start making progress on those things and realizing it's okay that we do that. It's okay that we identify the things that we want um, and that it's good for us and good for those around us when we do those things. Yeah, absolutely. I find that as well, for sure. It's usually, we think it's an external obstacle that is standing mm -hmm. in our way. Like we don't have enough time or my job sucks. And if I just had a different job or whatever it might be, we, we blame it on an external obstacle, but often it's usually the internal obstacle of mm -hmm. like those beliefs. Like actually, you know, I think I would be really selfish if I prioritized myself first or what would other people think of me and other people would be judging me and what would it mean if I failed and, you know, what would I have to give up in order to get this? And is that really worth it to me? And so on and so forth. Like mm -hmm. fear, it, it all, that really is the biggest internal obstacle. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure as you're working with clients, even though, you know, you make sure that they're a good fit and they're all psyched out and they've got a good, healthy point of view on their goals and you help them to be realistic and everything in the beginning, right? They're going to lose motivation along the way. You work with them for like a whole year, right? So I'm sure you see this a lot where people just kind of like dwindle in their motivation. What do you think is behind that? I know that's a loaded question, but what do you find are some of the biggest reasons that people do lose their motivation and how do you help them to get back to, um, you know, full steam ahead on their goals? Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of reasons why people lose motivation, especially from the year perspective, it's very cyclical. It'll be kind of like that mid-February dip and then the next quarter, kind of the middle of the quarter again. But then the upside is at the end of every quarter, normally you're kind of on a high. I don't know why, it just seems to work that way. <laughs> and so even when you're in the dip, you can kind of know like the high is coming, it'll be here before I know it, I just have to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the specific things that stand in the way, a lot of times it's like a lack of momentum. Sometimes it's those other goals kind of pulling at the edges of like, well, that actually sounds more interesting. Maybe I should go do that. Um, mm -hmm. Feeling like you're not making enough progress, having some of those external things, like maybe it's the other people saying, well, you're not spending as much time with me as you used to. 
maybe it's the scheduling things, realizing like, maybe I can't actually go to the gym five nights a week after work. Maybe that's just not realistic for you. Um, the kind of the novelty a lot of times wears off, sometimes by January 8th, sometimes by mid-February of that momentum of we had the fresh clean start on January 1st. Now it's not January 1st anymore, so we don't have that. Um, you you lose the collective momentum of everyone setting resolutions and we're all going into this together. So by February 15th, especially if you look around and most people aren't keeping their resolutions along with you, you don't have that kind of support that you were looking for. So there's kind of any number of reasons along with all the specific things that can come up based off of what specific goal you're working on. Like with weight loss, it's that you had two cupcakes when the, you didn't plan to, the scale went back up, all those kind of things. Um, and none of them are so significant that you can't overcome them. I believe you can overcome all of them. Even if they're all happening at once, you still can do it. Um, and ultimately, that's what you're going to have to do. At some point over the course of the year, work through those things. And then on December 31st, you can open the champagne and be celebrating all of it. Yeah, absolutely. So what about some of like the heavier stuff that can happen to people in the year? You know, like things that just sideswipe you. Like you didn't think you were going to lose your job. You didn't think that your spouse was going to say they want a divorce. You didn't mm -hmm. think that that person was going to get sick or pass away. So like with this, some of this heavier stuff, like how do you help people adjust? How do you hold space for them? Because people can get behind on their goals and start judging themselves when they're going through like a literal shit storm, you know? Yeah. So like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Absolutely. Well, I think it's, it's really special when people are working with the coach at those points, because if not, they would just be a normal year and it would still probably be something that they have to deal with. And so it's very nice to be able to kind of hold their hand, at least virtually through a screen and support them through those hard times. And there have been things that clients have had to go through where we kind of put pause on all their goals or some of their goals in just processing their emotions around a loss um, or some of those major things that have happened. I know the pandemic, of course, was a major thing for a lot of people um, that really upended all of our lives collectively, which made it a lot more interesting. But it is also such a good reminder, I think, of the things that we can control and the things that we can't control. And a lot of times people find that even in the midst of all the chaos that can happen over the course of a year, having a lot of those habits and routines that people want to establish and that a lot of times I'm working on with clients that can kind of provide a very stable foundation for all of the rest of that stuff. So they may not be able to keep training for the marathon or write another chapter of their book, but getting up when their alarm goes off and making a healthy dinner. Those are the things that are going to be supporting them and nurturing them and make dealing with whatever those things that may have happened are just that much easier. Yeah. Um, and then once they process through that, which they're going to have to do anyway, um, then they can come back hopefully with a good mindset, a good perspective, having taken that time to process their emotions and hopefully learned a few things along the way too. Yeah, definitely. I love that answer. So basically what I'm hearing you say is that, when, it, when something like that happens, maybe you help the client to press pause on some of the big, hairy, audacious goals, you yes. know, that are going to like take a lot of time in life, like sitting down and writing 2000 words a day in your book. You said you were going to do that. And now mom is sick, you know, um, but the daily rhythms, the daily habits of self-care that you've established, like your morning routine or, you know, eating, getting the sugar out of your life or just whatever it is that you're trying to do to try to maintain those things. Cause those things are actually going to be the, the rock, the rock that's going to hold you steady and, and help you to be more stable as you're walking through the storm. Exactly. And that's part of why I love working with people over the course of a year, because even if it isn't the year when someone close to you passes away or we go through a pandemic, working with someone over the course of a year is working with them over the course of a year. So you deal with birthdays and holidays and vacation and travel and all the normal idiosyncrasies that are part of any year. And so you're learning how to still work towards your goals, either around those things or through those things or with the help of those things. And those are the same skills that then you can use if something larger happens that yeah. you have to deal with. And sometimes people need the voice of their coach to remind them it's okay. You can take a break. You can slow down. Um, if you need to deal with something else, that's totally okay. And it's probably better to do that now than down the road when it's probably still going to be in your way and something you have to deal with. Yeah, for sure. Actually, you know, I was just telling one of my clients the other day who she had, um, an unplanned deviation from her food plan and we've been working together for a few weeks now. And sometimes people can be really judgmental of themselves mm -hmm. because they're like, oh my gosh, like I'm even working with a coach. Like what the heck is my problem that I'm still, you know, doing this stuff, even though I'm working with a coach and you know, I tell them like, you know, it's actually good. I find the people who have deviations while, even while they're working with me, 
tend to be more successful in the long run than people who were just perfect A plus mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. while they were working with me. And then they decide like, I'm good now. Like I've developed all of the, you know, whatever that I need, but they never actually had a deviation. It's like, mm -hmm. um, you know, people who get engaged without ever having had their first fight. Like, <laughs> it's just like, but do you really know that person? Yeah, you don't know how they fight. Have you met their family? Yada, yada, yada. Because, you know, being able to go through the hard times is when you develop the tools, right? So mm -hmm. I love that you're saying like, it's actually good, even though you're going through something that sideswiped you, like you have a better resource with you to have a coach there by your side. You're going to have to go through it on your own anyway. And so that's kind of the philosophy that I have with my clients too. If they have an unplanned deviation, even while they're working with me and we're going over all these things and whatever, like that's such a great opportunity to then explore that and dig deeper and say, well, what really happened? Like, and ask those questions that you didn't know you needed to ask. Cause you wouldn't ask yourself that if you just deviated on your own, you'd probably just beat the crap out of yourself again and try to get right back on track without having, you know, deeply explored it. So I love that. That's such a great, such a great way to think about it. Um, so question, do you only work with women clients or do you also work with men? I have worked with men. I have coached men in the past. I predominantly work with women as you mentioned going to my website. So it is predominantly pink and sparkly. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> not a lot of men are really on board with that image, but yeah. that's okay. And I have worked with men in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, it's pretty similar. I think mm -hmm. the biggest difference I noticed between the men and women is kind of the types of goals that they go after, mm -hmm. which is just sort of interesting to observe. Um, but we all have a lot of the same mindset uh, issues. So <laughs> we all, yeah. deal with we all have to work through them the same way. What, what, tell us more about the differences, like between the types of goals that you see men pursuing versus women. Mm. With men, a lot of times it's business and metrics and reading and the, what I would term like the more overt forms of personal development. And with women, a lot more, a lot of times it's more emotional or they want to work on embodying a mantra or relationships. Um, and of course they want to work on their businesses and run marathons and write books too. Um, but a lot of times it's coming at it more from the feeling as opposed to the achievement and the accomplishment associated with it. Of course, there's no hard lines there, but that's just something that from my limited perspective of working with men from what I have noticed and observed. Yeah. Yeah. And so that makes sense. I mean, we all have a balance of masculine and feminine energy, of course, but we all have different social conditioning pressures and things like that as well. So that's not really surprising to hear. I'm sure for most of the women listening, they're like, yeah, of course. But um, so do you find yourself when you work with male clients getting down to the level of feelings? Is it difficult for them to do that? Or is it just something that they haven't really thought about, but they're very uh, able to go there? I think they are normally willing. I haven't really had any issues with if we're trying really to get down into it. Most of the time, if they have taken the time and the money to invest in themselves through coaching, they're willing to do the work that is required. Right. Even if it's not something that comes naturally or they don't set their goals from that place. Um, it's something that we all have to deal with and we do have to get down to that level normally. And I've never had a guy who can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned that the, the mindset obstacles are kind of similar, but like, for example, you know, some of the stuff that comes up commonly for women that you mentioned, and I really see this a lot with my clients as well, like afraid of what other people would think of you, afraid mm -hmm. that you're going to be thought of as selfish, afraid that you're going to um, let your people down, like you're not going to be as great of maybe a wife and a mother or whatever it might be. Um, and a lot of that seems very um, conditioned by society in terms mm -hmm. of like what we're told the ideal woman is. Um, so what do you see for men? Do, do men think, are men worried that they're going to be judged as selfish for pursuing their goals? Or like, what's the, what's some of the differences there? I have heard those, but they're definitely not as common as they are in women, but pretty much everyone I've talked to feels that way at one point or another over the course of her goal achievement journey. Um, for men, the flavor is slightly different, but I do find that kind of the root of so much of our, oops, my light just went out. <laughs> So much of the things that we struggle with comes back to like not being enough. Um, and so men feel that too, just the way it expresses itself is kind of different. Totally. Yeah. That's so, that's so good that you're pointing that out, that the, the root of the, either way, like feeling like you're going to be judged as selfish mm -hmm. or maybe feeling like you're not successful enough overtly, not man enough or whatever it might be. Like right. both of them are rooted in not feeling enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very insightful. I like that. Okay. So would you share with us, like, what makes for a great resolution? And what are some, like, 
not great resolutions that you see people doing a lot? Like, what are some of the common mistakes that you make that you see people make? Like the do's and don'ts of what makes for a great resolution. Okay, so some of the do's are to make sure it's something you actually want. That I would say mm-hmm. is one of the biggest ones because, <laughs> especially when it comes to like the top ten resolutions, everyone's doing them. Uh, the Wall Street Journal is going to come out with like the top five resolutions you should set. Um, your friend may be doing this thing and sure it looks cool. So make sure whatever resolution you're setting is something you actually want to set, actually want to achieve, can actually envision yourself achieving and following through on and then being happy once you've done so. So I would say that's like the biggest thing. Um, the next thing would be to be realistic. And I mean this like in the size upwards and downwards. So make sure it's big enough that like you're going to actually be celebrating when it's done. Um, it's not like moving the laundry, although sometimes we do have to celebrate that too. Um, but also that it's small enough. So a year is just a year, 365 days. So you can accomplish a lot, but it is still a finite amount of time. So be realistic Mm -hmm. like that. You do want to set something big, but achievable. So that's Mm -hmm. something to keep in mind too, as far as don'ts. So don't set something you don't actually want. Um, don't set something that you already know you're not going to keep either. I think that is the biggest thing. It's the biggest detriment to your self-trust to set a resolution to say that you want to do something and achieve something, but ultimately know in the back of your mind, like that's not really going to happen. And I think that's the perspective that a lot of people come into resolutions with that. I'm going to set this and say this maybe because other people are doing it, maybe because other people are expecting me to, but to secretly know it's not actually going to happen. So that's what gives resolutions such a bad rap, I think. And also then what harms our self-trust when it comes to keeping our resolutions, but then ultimately keeping any other kind of goal as well. Yeah. Can I press you here? Because what I'm thinking, of course, you know, I'm a weight loss coach and, and you're a certified weight loss coach too. So I'm sure you work with people on weight loss goals in addition to lots of other weight loss goals, um, lots of other goals, sorry. But the thing that when you said, you know, don't set something that you know in the back of your mind is not really going to happen. So one of the biggest things I ask all of my potential clients when they're doing like their free call with me, like deciding, are we going to work together or not? I ask them like, what are some, what are your fears and hesitations about working Mm -hmm. together with a coach? And they always say, I'm afraid that I'm going to fail, that this isn't going to be any different than all of the past times that I've tried to lose weight. So how can we separate what did I know that's not what you're saying you're you're differentiating from that fear of failure fear of letting yourself down looking at all of your past mistakes and not really believing in yourself I know that's not what you're saying but what are you saying and how do we differentiate that from from this yeah so the example that I always use is like running a marathon like I don't really want to run a marathon like to me that sounds like the worst achievement ever no (laughs) desire to do that (laughs) I commend anyone who does it though. I'm completely amazed by them, but I really have no desire, but it's one of those things that you see people posting that kind of their finish line photos on Instagram and it sounds really cool. And it looks really great on a resolution list to be like this year, I'm going to run a marathon, but it's one of those things that I know I really don't want to do. It's one of those things that if I put it on my list, I'm probably not going to follow through on. Like I can be pretty confident that that's not going to happen. Whereas, um, last year, we're to the start of 2022, but in 2020, I intentionally made the decision. I was like, I'm not going to write a book this year. I know I want to write a book, but I don't know what it's going to be about. I'm not going to write it. And then a couple weeks into the year, I had an idea. And then in 2020, I ended up writing a book. So that's something that's like the exact opposite of knowing it's something I want to do and achieve and then getting it done, even though I didn't really plan to. Um, So it's that idea of you are ultimately going to go after those things that you really want. And so just take the time to make sure that it is in alignment. And I do that with clients a lot of times by helping them cast a vision for their future. So Mm -hmm. with resolutions, it's really on December 31st of next year. So for us, it's 2022. Where do you want to be in space and in your life? What do you want to have achieved? What kind of person do you want to be? What do you want to have learned? Who do you want to be with you? Um, And so being able to get really granular with that is very helpful in determining the resolutions you need to set and the things you need to do in order to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that's the key. Being able to say at the end of next year that I've run a marathon is not really part of that vision for me. So I know it's not a resolution that is going to be in alignment with that. And so it's not something that I really want to pursue or set. Yeah, absolutely. So basically it's kind of getting back to this idea of like, don't do shit you don't want to do. Right. (laughs) Because, 
we feel so much pressure around this time of year to set a bunch of goals because it's New Year's resolution season mm -hmm. and that's what everybody's talking about. And, oh, what should I do? And, you know, everybody in my office is going to run a 5K in February and they're all doing the couch to 5K. I'll do that too. Like, just because you want to be part of the group or you want to feel like you are doing something to set a goal for yourself because you should. Um, but really, if it's just motivated based off of something that you feel like you should do or you feel like you have to do, you are going to eventually rebel against that. Yeah, I just did a podcast interview, actually. I think it, it wasn't an interview. It was a solo show. And it came out last week, I think. Um, and it was talking about the difference between what we want and what we wish. And setting mm. goals from want-making energy or just kind of that wish energy. And one is ultimately going to get you where you want to go when you have a true desire, when it really is something you want, when it's in alignment with those desires that you have, when you have a really powerful why as opposed to the things that we wish for or that we think we should do or that other people do or other people think we should do. Um, those are the things that ultimately probably aren't going to be enough to drive us all the way to where we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you help your clients differentiate? Like what should they focus on this year? So for example, you were like, I want to write a book someday, but not in 2020. And of course it ended up changing, but like, what what type of questions did you ask yourself or how did you come to um to feel peace about that about like I've, i'm actually going to focus on these things this year and even though this is a real want it's just i'm not right now how did how do people figure that out well for me since i like to set kind of that wide spectrum i knew that it was 2020 so little did i know what was coming but i was finishing out my coach certification um, so I knew that was like one of my big things. I had plans to continue to grow my organizing business. So I already knew that I had a couple of big things in place. I knew I was going to be moving. Um, so those were the things that were like front of mind that I knew were going to happen. And so I set my littler goals kind of in alignment with that. And I figured, I don't know what I want to write about. I don't want to put a lot of pressure around this goal in particular. I know it's going to happen someday. This probably isn't the year for it. So I just kind of let there be enough space for me to then have an idea of what I want to write about and go from there. And then of course I ended up having lots of time <laughs> to yes. work on writing my book. So it worked out. Um, but sometimes you just need to give yourself that space of realizing this is the stuff that's in alignment this year and all that other stuff I want, maybe it'll be in alignment next year. It doesn't all have to be this year. And sometimes there are those steps you have to take first um, to then be able to take those other steps that ultimately you want. You may want to grow your business to hundred K, but maybe this year, your goal is to get certified and make it to 10K. And that's okay. Yeah. It's just a stepping stone on your way there. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever read um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert? Yes. Yeah. So like what you're talking about with the book thing, like it almost reminds me there's this section in the book where she talks about like ideas, like how does she know what book to write? And it's, so she kind of like talks about ideas as being spirits or these fairies or these own little entities that are just kind of flying around the universe. It's like something that wants to become manifested into reality was the book that you were supposed to write. And it's almost like that idea has like a little soul of its own and it doesn't really care who writes it. It's just going around and like tapping people on the shoulder. Like, do you want to write me? Do you want to write me? And so it's such kind of a fun little thing to think about, like that you had flirted with the idea. Like the idea had tapped you on the shoulder and said, do you want to write me? And you were like, yes, but now it's not the right time. And then the idea comes back around and taps you on the shoulder again, because it knew that it wanted to be written in 2020. Like, it's just kind of a fun way to think about things. How do we balance um, flexibility while we're working on goal setting? Because I'm sure you see this all the time. Like people say, I'm going to do this this year, but then they realize later on, that it wasn't in alignment or it was more of a should rather than a want at this point. And like not feeling guilty for letting those things go once you realize it's out of alignment or not the right time. And then being open to the idea fairies that tap you on the shoulder in the middle of the year and kind of redirect you. Like, I'm sure it's probably different with certain personalities, but yeah. How do you help clients navigate that kind of flexibility? Like know where you're going, but also be responsive to the, the flow of the universe or how things kind of just work themselves out? Well, I think the first thing is kind of like we talked about earlier, like the obstacles are part of the journey. That's part of where you learn. And so realizing this too is another thing that you get to learn from that you get to navigate and then you can figure out how you want to go forward from there. And, and then it's a tool you can use going on in the future. So I always say that you don't want to change your goal 
especially if it's a why centered want fueled goal unless your vision for the future changes so starting the podcast like if that's something that you know is going to double your roi and you get to create relationships and it's something you want in your business just because you get to june and it's a lot of work and you're scheduling interviews but you still aren't quite sure all the tech stuff like then you still want to keep moving forward even if it feels hard um, and even though like that thing over there, that new marketing trend, that looks way cooler and way easier. So maybe you should just do that. If your original goal really is something you want, then it's not a time that you really want to switch. You just need to come back to your why, assess your plan, figure out those things that maybe are still a little bit confusing, maybe get some help and then keep moving forward that way. But if you decide, actually, this isn't even the industry I want to be in. So why would I start a podcast here? then that's okay too, especially if the thing that now you want to go after is want focused and has a very strong why. Then it's just taking the time to realize that, giving yourself the grace that, okay, now I have new information that that's actually something that I want to do. It's okay that I leave this behind. I also remind clients a lot of the time that nothing is ever wasted. So the work that you had to go through to get here is now what's going to enable you to get there. And sure, there'll be other steps along the way, but everything you've learned along the way is going to be so valuable in that new direction or going after that new goal. Um, and sometimes it's just, they realized that instead of reading three books a month, maybe it's only manageable to do two. And that's okay too. It's something that you don't know until you try and start, start taking those steps forward. And you can always go back and like tweak your resolutions that you wrote on January 1st if you need to, because two books a month is still something to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. And like what you're saying with the why behind it, like why do you want to read two books a month? Right. Like, it's, is it because, you know, so-and-so read 40 books last year and you're trying to keep up with them and prove that you're just as smart as them or what, or is it because you really value learning and personal growth? Like, okay, so you want to feel like you're learning and you want to feel like you're growing. Like, do you feel like you're learning and growing from reading the two books a month or the one book a month? Great. Then you've accomplished what you set out for. Like, we think that we want the accomplishment, but really we want the way that we're going to feel or the way that we think we're going to feel as a result of having accomplished it. Right. And especially if your goal, like if you're reading to relax, but it's so stressful for you, for you to pick bo books that are short enough that you can get through three and to find that time and to make it happen, like when you're standing in line at the grocery store, like then it's not ultimately having the result that you want. You aren't feeling right. that peace and calm. You aren't enjoying it. And so right. dropping down to two books a month, if that's what's going to be that, what enables you to feel that way that you want to, then do that. Exactly. That's such a great, another way to look at it too. It's like, what, what's the why behind it? Yeah. Okay. So are there any people who really wouldn't benefit from setting resolutions? Like, are there just certain personality types that are kind of allergic to resolutions? <laughs> like, is this for everybody? Or are there some people who really should just give themselves permission to really not set any goals in life? Well, <laughs> I will differentiate. You can set goals outside of resolutions, even if I don't, doesn't mean you yeah. can't. Uh, so the people who shouldn't set resolutions are the people who don't want to. Like, if you don't want to set resolutions, that's going to be the first hurdle. And you just don't need to add another hurdle. There'll be plenty of others along the way. So just let that one go. Just set a normal goal or phrase it however you want to. Um, I think, I know you and I have talked about the four tendencies before. So, yeah. like, rebels are people, a resolution just sounds like the most awful thing in the world. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. uh, even questioners who think that it's, like, really arbitrary, I'll, I'll just start next Thursday. Like, that sounds like a good date. So there are people and personalities that don't want to or that it just doesn't seem like a practical option for them and i'm totally okay with that i just love working with the people who love that idea and that framework and i think that it is very powerful i think that it is very underappreciated and underrated um, when it comes to all the reasons and ways that it can be very powerful to help us move forward to the things that we want so i think especially if someone is committed and willing to give it a try to go into it with the expectation expectation that they will keep it instead of that they won't, then it can completely transform their relationship with resolutions. And it can be a very powerful tool. But if they don't fall into that category, then it's probably best not to so we can like keep lifting the the, uh, re the expectation and uh, the name of resolutions, but keep lifting it up. <laughs> instead of having yeah. people set them who don't actually want to follow through. Totally. Yeah. So if anybody's listening right now, and they're just like feeling completely like, grossed out you know like turned off by the idea of setting resolutions like oh my god this just sounds like a huge pain in the butt like is it really that time of year again yada 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 just don't do it you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do um and in fact you're probably just going to be hurting yourself in the long run if you attempt to do this yet again because you're just going to 
reinforce the idea that goals are not for you or that you always do fail at stuff, yada, yada. And that's not true, right? Like you're saying, like, it's not your fault that you drop off by, you know, the first week. It's because of the way that you're thinking about yourself and the way that you're thinking about your goals. So I guess funny, probably like the last big question that I want to ask you, I want you to share how people can work with you and what you're up to and everything. But what is even the point of setting any goals for ourselves at all in life? Like, you read the book, The Happiness Project, like, did it make her happier to set goals and accomplish them? Like, is happiness the motive to become happier by setting these goals? Or like, what is the motive? What is the point of setting goals and accomplishing them? I think the point is a little bit different for everyone. Um, but I think most of the time it comes from some sort of involvement, whether that's wanting to be happier and having that be the motivation for a whole project in a book and now kind of all of the work that Gretchen Rubin does. Um, for other people, it's love and family. Like that's their motivator. And everything that they do is kind of centered around increasing the amount of love that they feel in their life and the things that they do. Um, Brooke Castillo, who started Life Coach School, her thing is she wants to be an example of what's possible. Like that's the thing that motivates her beyond anything else. And so I think when we can identify what those things are, for us what those underlying motivating motivating factors are then we can identify the more concrete resolutions or goals that it's going to take to get there but ultimately it's all in line with whatever that thing is and for all of us it's just continuing to grow and evolve to the next level of ourselves and those things that we want um it gives us a direction to move towards and we get to have a lot of fun and growth along the way yeah absolutely it's basically just like i think the underlying premise is that you really have to believe that you create your own reality mm. that, you know, like we're, we're talking about thought work and everything with coaching, like that your thoughts create your experience of the world and, you know, your behaviors are driving your results. So if you're unhappy with your results and if you hate your current experience, like you have the ability to change that. And it kind of requires a belief, you know, like I'm sure some people who don't believe that, um, you know, that's the thing that really needs to be addressed. Like a lot of people have this mindset of like, oh, life is just happening to me. You know, like I'm just kind of sitting in the passenger seat and somebody else is telling me what to do or whatever. And like, this is a very real way that, that people feel about their lives. And so a lot of times we can feel hopeless, especially at the end of a year when we're looking back and we're nowhere near where we thought we could be. Um, what would you say to those people like who just need to hear like, no, you really can change your life. Like, can you, can you share with us like what you've seen as a coach, like that really speaks to that, that you really can change your life? Well, you really can change your life. <laughs> it's true. You have the power, especially with all of the tools that are out there, free and paid and otherwise, there is so much knowledge and resources that you can use to change your life in whatever way that you want to, whether you want to set a specific resolution or you just want to love yourself more or be more active in your community. There are so many tools and resources that you can use to do that. And I bet looking back over the course of the year, even if you feel like you didn't make progress on a lot of the things that you wanted to, even if you feel like you didn't check off those big goals that you had, even if you feel like next year is going to be no different, I bet that you can look back and see specific things that you didn't do or did achieve or ways that you grew or that time you handled that hard situation better than you could have ever expected. And so looking back, I'm sure that there are things that you can identify. And part of resolutions, I think, is the champagne and the confetti and taking the time to reflect and to celebrate those things that you've accomplished. And that is so important to be part of the foundation of setting your goals and resolutions for next year, whether you call them resolutions yeah. or not, to be able to know that you can celebrate. That's another thing that I love to reflect on self-trust from that perspective, because we say, when I write that book, like that would be so cool and I'm going to celebrate so much and then... Somewhere along the way, it just becomes like a thousand words on a thousand words on a thousand words and it becomes inevitable and then you do it and it's just kind of a shrug because you knew you were going to do it and you mm -hmm. did. Um, but taking the time to celebrate your accomplishments and to honor how far you've come and how much you've grown is such an important part of the process. And then it gives you the fuel and the motivation and the knowledge that you will recognize your own success that mm -hmm. can then provide power for whatever it is you want to achieve and accomplish next year. So I think that that is something else that plays a really important role. So don't undersell things that you did this last year. Take the time to recognize and celebrate and honor them and then set resolutions going forward from that place because then you will be able to recognize, I did grow. I did change. Mm -hmm. I am in control of at least some of the things in my life. Um, and look back early pandemic, see how far you've come in the last 18 months. 
and recognize the things that you've changed and the ways you've been able to grow and think of how much more you can change in the next 18. Yeah, that's so good. So good. So for anybody who's listening right now, who is like feeling really unmotivated to even think about 2022 goals, because you're beating yourself up for not having accomplished your 2021 goals, your homework is to take out your journal this week and actually reflect on all the things that you have done and all the things that you have made it through and celebrate those things because we will repeat what we reward. Our brains love to receive a reward. And so that's going to really bolster your motivation. If you don't feel at all in a place to even think about 2022 goals, because you don't have that belief in yourself. Well, the first way to get to that is actually to look back and celebrate how far you've come and maybe even zoom out from 2021, you know, like look back over the past five years or whatever it needs to be your whole life you know, like give yourself some credit for all the things that you actually have made it through, because that is what is going to um, give you the right frame of mind to set good 2022 goals. Yeah, love that. So Carly, for people that are interested in working with a New Year's resolution coach, uh, where can people find you? Um, Tell us a little bit about your program. And you know, what can people expect? You do a free call, I'm assuming. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about how people can find out about you. Yeah, so I'm pretty much across all platforms at Carly Tizano. My website is Carly Tizano, C-A-R-L-Y-T-I-Z-Z-A-N-O. And then in September, I launched the Resolve podcast. So kind of leading up until now and through the end of the year, I'll be sharing pretty much everything you need to know to make sure you are setting the right kind of resolutions, you have the right motivation, um, and lots of other fun tools and tricks along the way too. Um, And yes, through the end of the year, I'm also offering free resolution setting sessions. So we'll get together and talk about those things that you want to achieve. We'll make sure that it's coming from the want energy instead of the wish Mm -hmm. energy. We'll identify a really clear why, something that will motivate you all the way to December 31st and make sure that you kind of have the tools and resources that you need to at least get started. Um, And then the Resolve program is launching December, or not December 1st, January 1st, which is just around the corner. Um, And I'm so excited to help people tackle all of their goals across a a wide range of arenas and areas. And most importantly, to help them build the tools and skills that they need to reach any goal next year and then all the years afterwards. It's going to be so much fun working on self-confidence and self-trust, habit tracking, everything in between. It's going to be so fun. Awesome. Yeah. And what about your book? Is it out yet? It's not out yet. Um, This, my goal, one of my goals for this year was my two big ones were to launch the podcast and then to finish the first edit of my book. And little did I know at the end of last year that I was going to add over 40,000 more words to the manuscript. So there was a lot of writing, a lot of adding, then a lot of editing. Uh, It's with an editor right now. So it's going through kind of its first round of edits. Then it's going to go to some other preliminary readers for me to get feedback. And then I haven't decided if publishing it is on my goal list for next year, but it just may be. I'll have to share that soon. (laughs) That's so exciting. Awesome. Well, guys, make sure that you are following Carly and go check out her website. Um, you said it's carlytizano.com, right? Yep. Carly with a Y. Awesome. So I hope everybody will um, go give her a follow and check her out and check out the Resolve podcast and be binge listening to that now through the end of the year so that you guys are feeling in a great frame of mind to tackle 2022, whether you end up working with Carly as your coach or not. Her um, Her content is so inspiring and so tactical and helpful. So make sure that you go check her out. And Carly, thank you so, so much for being on with us today. Thank you. And I do have to say Jess's interview on the Resolve podcast comes out in January. And I am so excited to release that for everyone wanting to eat keto (laughs) in the new year or just looking to make a change. It's going to be awesome. Thanks, Carly. I appreciate you cheering me on and I'm cheering you on. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Thanks, Jess. (laughs) Bye-bye.